This is a video for a live motor mostly. He was talking in his last video about whether we could use one of the cells that a few of us have made in the past to run something like the microamp motor or another kind of low draw device, pendulum thing or something, but run on a shelf for many years. And this one here is about my most successful cell. It's carbon lead with Epsom salts as the electrolyte in distilled water. Uh, it was made in December 2012, charged a couple of times, run down, and then simply left. And the thing has carried on exactly like this. No maintenance, no nothing. Sat on a shelf, <laughs> running for years. So it seems ideal. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take it apart, have a look at it, see what kind of deterioration there is after four odd years, and then tidy it up and then replace the Epsom salt and the distilled water with rainwater. See, no blue or anything on it. All right, so, ah, I see what's happened. Now, because there was a piece of metal in the side, that's gone off and deposited onto the lead and onto the carbon rod. Very interesting. Right, so I'll clean that up and uh, see if there's any actual deterioration. By the way, the circuit here is a regular blocking oscillator. If you have a look on Wikipedia, you'll find a few circuits, so just do a search. But it's very, very similar to Lidmotor's own penny circuit. I just scaled it down a bit. Anyway, that's that. That's what was running and flashing. There we go, that's the lead a bit smarter. And I should make a note to wear gloves or use uh, towels or something around lead whenever you touch it. It's not a good idea to touch it with your fingers. Um, but this has got so little damage on it. I mean, you can even see what, P43. So uh, hang on a minute. I think that relates to the weight in grams. An impromptu idea. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> so I've just found something out after this thing has been sat uh, producing power really for the last four years, soaked and what have you. Uh, that weighs 41 grams. So there we are, that's everything washed up and put back together. So next to put some rainwater in, and this is from a bucket they put outside. Alright, and the next thing is. I'll put some wires on these and we'll see what kind of voltage and current it's got. And there it is ready for measuring. Now I should say that I'll put links underneath to this motor, the circuit diagram and such if people haven't seen it. But what I need is 0.5 volts and at least a couple of microamps. So first of all, voltage. Oh, 0.590. Okay, well that seems to be enough. Swap over. Just need a couple of microamps, like I say, so it should be able to do that. Ah, oh, yeah, very cool. So, about 400 microamps. Well, after trying with a solar cell and a AAA battery, I've had an idea about making that run faster. All right, and as you can see, the idea worked. What was it? Well, to put the old circuit back in there, the old flashing circuit. So the point being of it is that uh, the 0 0.5 volts from here gets transformed by basically dual thief in it and allows this capacitor now to hold about 1.6 volts. So raising the voltage, raise the speed of the rotor. Here's the circuit diagram. And you can see it's quite a simple circuit, regular blocking oscillator, got the 0.1 UF capacitor, in parallel with the one meg resistor and they go into a C1815 in this case any MPN will do it but instead of having an LED on the output to flash um, I usually have them from the collector to the base what I've got is a 1k resistor in uh, series with the LED and that limits the amount of current going to the LED allowing the 1N4148 to output to the motor circuit and that means that uh, as I say, we've now got 1.6 volts on this. So you might be wondering, why have I left the LED on if we're getting nothing? Well, if I stop the rotor, 
it's one way of knowing really whether whether things have stopped and if I well it takes a while to do it because it builds up the charge if I turn off this main light and we watch that LED and it may take a little bit of time but the LED will begin to flash and I might actually uh, cut the video short a bit and come back in a couple of minutes because it does take a while. Well, you can see it's starting now, so I don't need to really. But that will build up in brightness as that flashes to become, well, pretty much the regular flashing circuit that it always used to be. And I thought that was quite fascinating in itself. And here it is, off and running again. And I am wondering whether this is going to be what could be called a forever motor because I can't see that going anywhere. If it didn't go anywhere in the four years, I don't know it's going to go anywhere anyway. I've took the uh, metal work off, now the steel or whatever it was that it was attaching into the lead. Um, I've filed that down as much as possible so there should be a lot less corrosion. There wasn't that much for the past four years because the thing kept running. So really, well, I'll keep an eye on it, stick it on a shelf and just watch it every now and again. Okay, thanks for watching.